Hey, all, Michael Lunsford here, Citizens for a New Louisiana. I don't know if you're aware of this, but your Lafayette City Council does not hear you. They do not listen to you. They don't care what you think. And I'm going to give you case in point from the last council meeting, July the 7th. Here we go. We do have public comment on the item. First, we have those citizens who did not wish to speak who emailed in to the council office on the email line and 11 uh, emailed in in opposition to it, one emailed in in support and the emails are in your boxes for your review. Um, also, who did not wish to speak, blue cords for tonight, we received 90 in opposition, four in support. Repeat that one more time, please. I, I didn't hear. We received uh, do not speak blue cords, 90 in opposition, mm -hmm. four in support. Okay. So did you hear Pat Lewis? Pat Lewis was shocked that 90 people are opposed to the introduction of this ordinance. He was so shocked, he said, could, could, could you repeat that again? And then, look, two people come up afterwards, speakers, speaking uh, one way or the other on the issue of whether or not this should be introduced. And the whole time, I don't think Nanette's hearing them because she's thinking about this. She interrupts, not that she waits for the speaker to finish, and she interrupts the process to say, hey, wait a minute, I have a question. <laughs> Check this out. Yeah, the question is, when you said 90 opposed. Yeah, they brought in a stack of blue cords. I'm just, I'm just trying to clarify. They're opposed to Airbnbs in general. Are they opposed to regulations on Airbnbs? Well, and usually it's in reference to the ordinance. When they sign in, it's in reference to the ordinance, and, okay. it, and they ask them, okay. are you opposed to so whatever not, you sign into? Okay. I just wanted to clear that up. They're not opposed to Airbnbs, apparently, in terms of they're, their response to the ordinance. Yes, okay. they, yeah, the ordinance, correct. Okay. Yes, Specifically, okay. That's, I just, my, I needed that. Okay. <laughs> Thanks understand thank you thank you so here we go justifying what the end result is going to be at the end of this process the end result is she's voting for it. you can tell because she's in favor she's in favor of the ordinance regardless of what it is regardless of what anybody has to say regardless that 90 people have signed in in opposition to this apparently she's justifying in her mind her vote later well they're not really opposed to this maybe they don't understand 90 people against four. The 90 don't understand, the four must have. <laughs> All right, so here is, to answer Nanette's question, what are they opposed to? Check this out. This is going to go a little while. I'll be back in a minute. Hang on. Hello. Um, I wrote this down to... What's your name, please? My name is Jean Longvenet. I've been a resident of this city for over 20 years now. My husband and I purchased our home a little over 10 years ago. We purchased in the area we did because of the close-knit neighborhood community and the large yards that are great for raising families. Two years ago, everything changed for us when neighbors purchased the home in between our residence and theirs. They turned it into a short-term rental, which has been a long-term nightmare for all of us living around it. It is rented out most of the year with random strangers coming and going daily. It has been the location of a wedding. It has been rented out multiple times as a party house, which is becoming a trend with short-term rentals because it's cheaper than a party room at a commercial location. The owner's ad states no parties are allowed, and yet they still occur and are not stopped. The owner says the penalty is that the renter loses their deposit, yet just furthering their profit while we still get to live through it. They have even left town for the weekend upon arrival of renters to quote them, we knew we're going to be a problem. I had one of their renters leaning against my home smoking a cigarette when I walked out to take my kids on a bike ride one morning. I had no idea who this man was or where he had come from. It was terrifying. Kids had raced ahead of me while I was locking the door. They were already at the street before I saw him. I was scared to try to get back, did them back inside because he could have gotten to my door before me at that point. I decided to get away from him as quickly as possible. He proceeded to follow me and my children down the street. He didn't stop until he saw me take out my cell phone, which I did to call my husband, who then watched him on our security cameras walk back to the short-term rental behind us. The short-term rental was even rented out for the filming of a movie for over two weeks, along with the owner's own personal residence. They moved during the filming of all of this and left their neighbors to live through the movie hell for over two weeks. 
We were given zero notice of this and arrived home to over 30 vehicles, massive trailers, and catering vehicles surrounding our home. They would carry on until at least 10 p.m. every night and block access to our home. We and several other neighbors called the police multiple times, and yes, there's records of this. If they showed up, we were told that they could go on until 10 according to the noise ordinance. Yet my children are three and five and go to bed at 7.30 and had movie crew members hanging outside their bedroom till almost 10 every night for two weeks. If the cops showed up to address the parking, they would move vehicles until the cops left and then return to where they were parked. They have even tried, had even tried stopping me from getting home after picking my kids up from school because they were shutting down our street to film. They had zero permits to shut down a street. Like I've already stated, the owners moved out for all of this, leaving us to live in it. The owners have even admitted to renting their short-term rental out to businessmen from Texas for three hours and laughed about it. We can only imagine what went on behind our house for why people need to rent it for three hours in the day. The last time I messaged one of the owners because of an issue, she texted me the renter's name and said to contact them if I have a problem. Why should it be my responsibility to deal with the customers of their business? Because it's been referred to several times by their speakers as a business that is operating in our residential only RS1 neighborhood. Zoning and planning issued a letter of abatement to the owners of the problematic property in February. They've never ceased rental activity and were granted an appeal for a variance. They then had the first appeal postponed because they were going to be out of town. And now with COVID, it's postponed indefinitely. Meanwhile, even during quarantine, they continue to rent. Short-term rentals are of a transient nature and we never know who will be next door to us on a day-to-day -day basis. Occupants are never required to provide any form of identification. Anyone with a credit card can rent them. We are in constant fear for the safety of our children. Furthermore, the short-term rental next to us is less than 300 feet from a middle school. How can it be okay or legal for a business that requires zero identification be allowed anywhere near any school? They could be rented to pedophiles or sex traffickers looking for close access to victims and no one would have a clue. I hope this is an issue you all take very seriously. I'm asking you all to please consider these issues and the impact short-term rentals can have on our community. Even cities such as New Orleans have realized the perils that short-term rentals can present. They are currently in the process of passing restrictions allowing only occupied, owner-occupied short-term rentals in residential-only areas. We bought a nice home in a residential-only neighborhood. We chose not to live in a commercial area or next door to a hotel. How is our expectation of security and a certain quality of life less important than our neighbor's greedy desire to earn a profit no matter okay, the cost? Your time, is, your time is up. I'm sorry. So you'd think that would answer the question, what are these 90 people opposed to? I know that went on long. I felt like you should hear the whole thing because this was one of four testimonies that were just like this. The other three, just like this. And it went on. It actually it was about 20 minutes worth. I do the video, but no one watches a 20 minute video. So that's what this is about. And here's the vote. Okay, so we did the uh, council discussion, public comments. Then now we have to vote for a council to introduce the ordinance. District 5? Uh, yes. District 1? Yes. District 2? Yes. District 3? Yes. District 4? Yes. The motion to introduce is approved. So after watching this, tell me, do you think the Lafayette City Council listens to their constituents? 